Hey everyone, my name is Luke and welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a superb day wherever you are. Now, my friend Bill has been at it once again with his Pixel Math Wizardry. If you're a Pixinsight user, you're not really going to want to miss out on this one, I'd say. So what I've done for you today, I'll just change the scene. I have prepared a little bit of a demonstration for you. One in one shot color, one in SHO. And what we're going to be taking a look at really here are Bill's new kind of HOO normalization and SHO normalization maths. And he's also included now an HSO normalization math script. Also, there's a lot to go through, um, and I'm just going to try and keep this as raw as possible. Now, if you want to learn the thread through the needle, the whole nine yards of it, if you like, then please do visit Bill's video on this that he released along with these scripts. And if you'd like to download just the scripts, then I recommend you go up to Bill's channel and do that. That's these three right here. He's provided a download link to those. What I'll be doing, as well as linking to Bill's original video, is providing you with all of these, which are basically my day-to-day -day processing icons, uh, just in a description box download for you. So you can download these, whack them into your Pixin site and process alongside with me, as I think that's a pretty good way to learn things. Now, granted, if you don't have the Russell Croman Blur Exterminator, Noise Exterminator, Star Exterminator tools, they won't work for you. And if you don't already have SPCC installed, we're gonna skip that for this particular tutorial, just for the sake of brevity and keeping things simple but that also won't work for you just to let you know if they don't work that's absolutely fine it's expected behavior now uh it's going to look something like this process icons luke i've just called it all you're going to need to do is just drag that into your pix insight uh desktop once it's open from wherever you've downloaded it to if they don't immediately appear on the screen you need to right click click select all icons right click again click arrange icons and that should pull them into whichever workspace that you're working on um now what will this contain so as you can see there's a bunch of tools that are already included along with pix insight there are bill's stretching maths right there there are bill's hoo sho and hso normalization maths right there bill's color masking tools really fantastic tools i use them every image and also Bill's star reduction tools too. Um, just for the sake of it being my actual processing set, I have also included Blur Exterminator, Noise Exterminator, Star Exterminator links on there in case you have those. Um, if you don't and you're looking at purchasing them, then it's as good a time as any to mention I do have affiliate links down in the description box below. But I promise there isn't a conflict of, of no, a conflict of interest on this. I've been singing these tools praises long before I was uh, anything like an affiliate with Russell Croman. Anyway, they're great. If you want to use those uh, links and help me out, then it would really be massively appreciated. And finally, there's just these three little tools down here. It's just something I cooked up real quick for rescreening stars back into a starless image. Now, I've gone crazy, talked too much already. It's three minutes in and we even started. So let's get going now. I'm going to demonstrate first of all on a one shot color image. Now, I, what you want to do is just open up STF, hit the nuke icon, and you should roughly see what sort of data that you're dealing with. If indeed you click that nuke icon and you just go, ah, my eyes have been blinded by green, as I often used to do, click the unlink little button right there, and then stretch again. Now, to make these tools work properly, you're going to have to neutralize the background. So, to do that, you're just going to hold alt on your keyboard and then tap n to put things into preview mode and find a blank pretty boring segment don't really matter if there's small stars there just try not to get massive ones and draw a preview box as you can see i've just made preview zero one on my screen right there go to process color calibration background neutralization and select that preview as your reference image hit the square and nuke again okay that thing is now background neutralized you'll notice the stars are a bit green so in my case i am also just going to go scnr drag that across straighten things up once again a little bit further the next thing that i would be doing at this point is blur exterminator before taking things any further for the sake of just keeping this as brief as possible i will skip it right now but just imagine that I went okay across and that processed, then I'd pass it through Noise Exterminator, probably around about 
65% strength on this particular data set. Again, I'm not, I don't want to waste a single moment more than I have to every time. And then we'd be moving on to the next step, which is taking this into the non-linear phase, if you like. So I'd be going HT stretch unlinked. This is Bill's unlinked stretching maths. Drag and drop that on the image that you're working on. Reset your STF. And you are good to go to the next step, which is going to involve pulling the stars out of this image, basically. So in my case, Star Exterminator does a wonderful job. I always use it. Now I am going to have to go ahead with this, so it's generate star image and click unscreen stars. It really is the best way to do things, and I've also included those rescreening tools for you right there to make it super easy as I'm going to demonstrate. So let's get on with that. All right, guys, so a brief wait later, and what we have now are two separate images, one with just the stars, as you can see right there, and also in the background, the starless image. As you can see, <laughs> Star Exterminator has done a a flawless job I would say and now we can move on to the next phase of processing so in this case what it's going to be is opening up the HOO normalization tool now as you can see Bill has very kindly written out descriptors for what each of these functions is going to achieve for you and also is it added some notes on the end on general usage of these tools uh, and advice on their use now you can dive into this and Bill will teach you all about it on his video. I don't know the tool as well as him. He made the thing. So <laughs> I'll leave that up to him for this. All I'm just going to do is show you how to use it in the most basic manner. So in my case, I'm just going to drag the tool straight across and drop it on the window. As you can see, it's taking things into looking pretty interesting already. The next thing we're going to want to do is change these yellows out to more of a nice tonal red uh, in that case. I want to target those yellows, so I'm going to use a yellow mask, drop that on this image, blur it a couple of times with the mask blur tool, three looks pretty good, drag that over onto that stylus image, open up curves, create a preview window, and now working just on the red, as you can see right there, I'm going to push those up a good way. That looks good. Now on the green, I'm just going to raise that up ever so slightly and then pin down the lower end of the green curve. So as you can see, if I go too far with that, it starts to make things look uh, a little bit burgundy. Um, but when you get it just about right, you can see some yellow tones coming along the inside, going to kind of coppery, rusty tones, and then orangey reds on the outside so this looks pretty good to me just for the sake of this demonstration i'm going to go ahead and hit apply on that reset my entire tool and at this point i'm actually going to close the yellow mask i'm done with it and now i think just taking a look at this thing it looks a little bit harshly stretched i could have been more careful you can alter the hd stretch uh intensity but instead what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually drag down, whoops, make a fresh preview on this. Just drag down on the old RGBK, the entire thing, until it looks a little bit more visually appealing to me. Okay, at that. And a touch more saturation around about there. This is really, really, really heavy handed and no doubt anybody processing along would take much more time doing this but just as you can tell I'm trying to pull this together as quick as I can without wasting a single moment of your time now at this point you can actually pop the stars back in this thing and that's exactly what we're going to do so in my case you'll notice some of these stars well they're under sampled but uh, they're also a little bit green so I'm just going to hit them real quick with SCNR that's straighten things out real nice and now to put these two back together, I used to always do just stylus plus stars. I think this method works a lot better. So we're going to use stylus for rescreening onto the stylus image. Stars for rescreening. Whoops. Onto the stars image. And then the third tool that I made there, just rescreen stylus stars. Just whack that onto any of the images. Don't worry about it. And now you've got a rescreened image. The stars have been put back in with no kind of added intensity. It's pretty cool. Now you probably notice stars look a little bit big. Why not wind them back in? Uh, it's as good a time as any to tell you about Bill's star reduction tools. So uh, why not demonstrate those two? 
So the image that we just were kind of working on without making any further changes to it, we're just going to drag over, excuse me, clone for stylus onto it. And then with the image that we just made, pick one of these star reduction methods, adjust it if you wish in terms of intensity. I'm just going to show you at defaults, wham, take a look at that. It's straightened things out real nice. It's looking wonderful. And if I had gone ahead and put on the, uh, the good old noise exterminator, blur exterminator, all that good stuff. If I can just uh, maybe show you real quick a bit of noise exterminator, why not? Um, it would look even better than it already does. Uh, let's just take a look at this and then we'll move straight onto that SHO demonstration and uh, get things underway. Yeah, that's done a wonderful job. I, I really, I'm a massive advocate for these tools. I think they are fabulous. So as you can see, we've gone from being an image of nothing to a pretty decent looking shot. And you can take this so much further if you just spend a little bit of time an effort and work out what looks good for you but you can see i've just knocked this up in a few minutes you can do that too uh, i've done nothing special right there i'm going to close all these down clear up the workspace just at such because it's a mess and now we can take a look at these three files i've prepared so this is an sho demonstration now true mono data so i'm just going to give these a preliminary quick stretch and see what we're looking at there's some stacking artifacts you need to get out, so dynamic crop. Let's just get rid of those. So I'm going to be a little bit strong with this. Drag those across to the other two windows first, then hit the tick. Now everything is matching in dimensions exactly. Linear fit to the HA window is what I'm going to use. So tadpoles, HA, OK. Drag linear fit over to the sulfur and now to the oxygen. All good. At this point, again, I would be running blur exterminator, noise exterminator on these things, but just for the sake of saving some time, I'm going to skip it for this. Bear in mind, I would never do that on my own images. I'm just doing it for the sake of this. You should absolutely use blur exterminator, noise exterminator if you have those tools. They are wonderful. But the next step now is going to be the HT stretch unlinked once again. So I'm going to use that on each of these images real quick. Drag it across. Reset those views. And now we can start to put these things together. So I'm just going to use LRGB combination. For the sake of this, I'll just untick the L. And select these three in order. So it's already got the sulfur that I wanted right there in the R channel because we're going to make an S H O R G B image. So now we want the H in the green and oxygen over in the blue. Looks good. I tended to not use chrominance noise reduction anymore these days, so we'll leave that unticked. Apply global, and we now have this. Looks all right. Stars are a little purple and stuff. If you don't have this script I'm about to show you, and get it you know it's free i think it's available on sky pixels repository but basically script utilities correct magenta stars wham bam thank you ma'am the magenta stars have been corrected do you know what i mean it's it's great um you can also do this by inverting the image applying an scnr and then re inverting the image once again but i don't know why you would when you could just have that script now, the next thing to do with this is to pull the stars out. So we're going to have to go through that once more. So star exterminator, generate a star image, unscreen the stars, and now we wait. All right, guys, wait over. We are now finished. As you can see, we've got some magenta going back into those stars. That's fine. Don't worry about it. We know we've got a script to sort it, and we've got a starless image. So great. Now I'm going to run. The SHO normalization, again, if you open it up and take the time to read, or better yet, strongly advised, watch Bill's video. He's going to talk you through the whole darn thing. You'll understand much better what you're doing. But for the, the layman, like me, <laughs> it was nice to know that you could just go wham, and it will work 
pretty well. So uh, we've passed it through SHO normalization right there. Straighten things up just a little bit. And now at this point, we can put the stars once again back in. So um, you may decide, mm, I want to take out a little bit of this green, by the way, as well. And that's fine. If you want all of it out, go for it. You can also do this within the script as well, by the way. Or you might want to just take out a chunk of it. That looks good to me. I'll go with that. Once again, straight through these uh, starless boink. Wait for that to finish. There we go. Stars. Great. And now the rescreen tool onto either of them. There you have it. We've got a uh, pretty neat looking image. Those stars have gone back to a nice color once again. And now at this point, you can just make a few basic manipulations if you'd like. Maybe a little bit of saturation. I don't know. A little bit of a curve. You probably would do this before you take those uh, stars. Uh, but yeah, once again, I mean minutes and you've got a a nice looking completed image and once again you could pass this through the uh, star reduction methods that Bill's provided now I just wanted to get this out there to help spread the word help people with these tasks because I know people struggle with this kind of thing but you needn't uh, there are tools out there to help you so uh, basically that's about it I hope this has been helpful to some of you out there as always I'd just like to say very genuinely thank you so much to everybody giving you support on YouTube memberships, Patreon, all that good stuff. Much love to each and every one of you out there. And I think probably for about the next couple of weeks, that's it from me. I'm thinking there's so much bad weather around. It's quite honestly getting me down. I'm going to take us just a short break from worrying about content just for a year. Uh, just for a couple of week and uh, get my head back in the game. So, till the next one, guys. Look after yourselves. It's been a pleasure, as always. And hopefully, <laughs> clear skies. <laughs>